Cody and I were really drawn to the Principles Project uh, many years ago, and now over many editions, growing larger each time, which we're blessed with, for a simple reason. We were frustrated and we wanted some change. We were frustrated because Econ 101 is one of the largest courses in the country. It takes in tons of students, and yet they don't seem that engaged with economics. We want to change because we thought of a way to do it better. I'll, I'll give you an example. When we first started working, there was a movie that was still a little old then, a little older now, uh, had Rodney Dangerfield in it called Back to School. And there's this scene where Rodney Dangerfield goes back to school and it's an economics class. And he asks the professor, is there any real firm or market that behaves like this? And the professor scratched his head and said, it doesn't matter. Well, it does matter. And that's why we were turning so many students off. Tony and I figured there was a two part plan. One was making sure that the course was relevant, that it was about the real world, not about widgets and X's and Y's, and that it was student friendly. How do you solve a problem? How do you approach something? Those two tricks and all the feedback we've gotten from users and adopters and students over the years have really helped make the book a success. We're both really proud of it. I just want to echo some of the things that Glenn has said, particularly about our frustration as instructors with the textbooks that were available before we wrote ours. And one of the things I noticed with my own students is many of them came to the economics class expecting one thing and we were giving them something else. That when the average first, second year student thinks about the economy, they think about the companies they interact with, you know, Apple, Google, and, and they were finding almost none of that in the textbooks or to be honest, even in my lectures because I was following the books and it was fairly abstract. The other thing was that when I did try to bring real world examples into the course, in other words, I tried to, to um, go beyond the textbooks I was using. And sometimes what I would do, in fact, always what I would do is I would put little snippets from news articles from the Wall Street Journal or elsewhere on my exams. And I would then have the students analyze those using the principles of the course. And one student I remember in particular after final exam, he was a good solid student, came to office hours, just the kind of student he was like. And he said, you know, Professor O'Brien, on your exams, you know, you put these questions about the real world and sometimes they struggle with them. Why is it that that doesn't run through the whole course? Why isn't that in the textbook? And the truth was I had no good answer. It should be in the textbook. And so what Glenn and I did was we decided we put it in the textbook that essentially anything you want to talk about in economics, you can talk about using actual businesses and actual products. So that was really our motivation to produce a textbook that met students where they are, met their expectations, and allowed them, even if this was the only exposure they were going to have to economics during their four years in college, that they would be able to come away with an understanding of how economics actually can help them explain things that matter to them in policy and in the business world as they observe it. I would think technology, just in terms of pedagogy, technology is the big thing. We started in 2004, essentially the print textbook was pretty much what there was. There was also print supplements, instructor's manual, and the study guide and so on. And one of the things that I think Glenn and I are most excited about is how in the current digital update, we just have tons of things that I think will be very helpful to students pedagogically. Uh, Glenn has recorded videos, for instance. I know a lot of students these days would rather listen or see someone talking about something and see visuals rather than have to, to read through the book. We have for our solved problems, which have always been a big selling point in our textbook. You know, we take a problem, we break it down step by step, we tell students how to do the problem, how to come up with the answer. We now have animations that are done by Mike Ryan, who's done a wonderful job. And he does a whiteboard where he talks 
students through. And I think that that really is, is quite good. We also have uh, animations of the figures because I think any instructor of principles of economics will say that where students begin to have significant problems is when the graphs start to get a bit complicated. I know that's a stumbling block for my own students. And maybe best of all is my lab, because I tell my own students, you know, you should come to class, you should read the textbook, but even if you sleep through my lectures and you know, you, you, you barely open the textbook or barely, barely look at it. If you do my lab, you can't help but learn economics because it takes you through things step by step, gives you the opportunity to test yourself. Do I actually understand this? And brings you back to the book where you, if you in fact didn't understand, you have another chance to, to read the relevant section. So I think that's just been a great advantage that we now have the technology that supports students. To my mind, that may be the most important difference between the first edition back in 2004 and the new digital version, uh, which is due out soon. Wow, the most exciting element for the digital update, it's almost hard to say. You know, for Tony and me, every update, whether it was a print book or in the digital world, has involved lots of change, all new openers, all new examples. I think though this update is particularly exciting. You know, in the digital world, you can tell your story differently than in a book. You can decide, is this story best told in words, in a podcast or a video or graphs? And we've really done that. Partly it's what's going on in the world. For example, when we did the financial crisis, uh, previous editions, we pivoted the way we taught macro. The COVID-19 pandemic this time has changed everything. It's changed the micro part of the book, the macro part of the book, the way we look at public policy. But features are really important too. Things like the podcasts and videos where we're able to mix and match the words and images and graphs and things that students will want to grab onto and real-time data to solve problems. You know, it used to be so frustrating. The students working on something in the book, it seems practical, it's about data. But oh my God, it's about five years ago. Now you have real-time data feeds into a digital book that enable you to do it now. These are all exciting. They're all due to changes in the world and changes in technology, and we've grabbed them both.